before we get into the topic of today's video, I want to congratulate Charles Leclerc on running what was a brilliant Monza race. He made those tyres last in that second stint and he was very much worthy of his win. So congratulations to him. He's won in Monaco his home race and then Monza his team's home race. Impressive stuff. But for today's video, I wanted to focus on the situation at McLaren. And let's talk about how they're their own worst enemies. I'm going to break this video down into four different parts. It's going to be the initial move, the overtake between Oscar and Lando. Then the situation from Oscar's perspective, just his, then Lando's, and then the teams. It will all make sense in the end, hopefully. If you do have a strong opinion on this, though, please watch until the end of the video before you make any comments or make any judgments. Watch until the end. Let's start with the overtake. For this, I want you to take out the teammate element completely. Now, I understand you can't really take this out because it does play a part in how Lando will approach the situation. But just for the interest of this, take out the fact that they're teammates and just look at them as separate drivers from different teams if you need to. If you look at it that way, I don't see how you can think that it was anything other than a good overtake. I thought it was perfectly fine and it was fair. Again, don't jump the gun. I'm going to get on to perhaps why he shouldn't have made the overtake later. But I'm talking about the move independently of them being teammates and independently of the championship. Oscar goes around the outside of Lando into turn four. He's always in control of his car. He brakes later. He runs to the outside of the track so he doesn't pinch Lando on the inside. And while Lando does get a little bit squirmy, perhaps he's not expecting Oscar. Well, in fact, he did kind of hint at that in his post-race interview. And so he gets a little bit squirmy, but he did have space on the inside. Sadly, though, his loss of momentum because of this move is what then cost him the position to Charles Leclerc. But from an overtake perspective, it was clean. And if these two weren't fighting for the championship, if that was Max Verstappen or Lewis making that move around the outside, we'd be, we'd be saying, bravo, what a move into turn one. That could make that race. So that's from the overtakes perspective. In short, the move was a good one. It was a clean one. Oscar had a run into turn four and he pulled it off. But the overtake itself isn't really the issue. Let's look at it from Oscar's perspective. If we look at it from Oscar's viewpoint, he had nothing to lose. He's improved this season, I think, as the season's gone on. And while he can still mathematically win the championship, it's not going to happen. And he has to know that. He's been put in that car to win races alongside Lando. And I think they've got an incredibly strong partnership at McLaren. His job is to at least try to win the race. And from what we've heard from Zach Brown, there was no team orders at the start of the race. There was no team orders at any part of the race, but they hadn't had a discussion, it seems, about how the race was going to go down at the start. If you say to drivers they're free to race, then what, what do you want Oscar to do? Do you want Oscar to be, do you know what, we're free to race, but I, I'm not going to race. I'm just going to sit back. He had a run. He's taken it. It's also important, I think, from Oscar's perspective to show that he can compete with Lando. Because I feel like Lando has had the best of him, especially in race pace. And I think now as we head toward the end of 2024, heading into 25, maybe he wants to just put that statement out there that, you know, he is capable of winning races without Lando giving him, you know, the opportunity like we saw in Hungary. Now, whether he should have made the move, we're going to get on to in a bit. But before we do that, let's have a look at it from an entirely different perspective, from Lando's point of view. First of all, he's fighting for a championship, one that he can actually win now that Max Verstappen and Red Bull are struggling. And not only that, his main title contender, Max, is starting in seventh place, and he's starting in pole. Perfect. He's got his teammate behind him. McLaren won two. He's got a bit of a buffer. It couldn't have been better. Their main competitors in the race were likely going to be Ferrari, starting the behind them. But you'll be thinking, well, we need to keep this one-two between me and Oscar heading into the first few corners, the first lap, and we can try and control the race. Not only, though, did he lose first, and he said that he was kind of caught off guard a little bit by Piastri's move, which he found aggressive. So not only did he lose out to Piastri, he then lost out to Charles Leclerc as well. Ultimately, that cost him in the first stint. He definitely lost time in the first stint, but I don't think it cost him the win because McLaren, eventually, they were running in 1-2. 
but Norris wasn't able to catch and pass Piastri like I thought he would. And then, of course, Ferrari went long, and we know the outcome of that. He said, obviously, that Piastri's move took him by surprise, so maybe that's on him. He said he didn't want team orders. He wants to win on track, which is good to hear, but I think they're going to need team orders. They really are. Having two drivers taking points off each other is fine if you're Hamilton and Rosberg in Mercedes and you've got no real competitors and you know you're miles ahead of everyone but as, as the field currently is everyone is fighting for wins and at different circuits different teams are at the front McLaren admittedly are the ones that are the most consistent Lando said if he breaks later he and Oscar would have crashed I don't buy that Max Verstappen for instance does not let anyone pass on that second chicane on lap one <laughs> lap to any lap for that matter he would push them wide we saw that with hamilton lando was too cautious i think because maybe it was his teammate maybe he knows he has something to lose in the championship and his teammate has definitely taken advantage of that so let's look at it from the perspective of mclaren the team this is where 100 percent of the blame lies in my opinion with the team there needed to be a conversation before the race on how the drivers were going to stay ahead of the Ferraris and work together to do so. But based on what I saw after the race, the interviews from Zach Brown, from Lando, from Oscar, it's clear that a conversation like that never took place. There wasn't anything put in place to ensure the drivers would do that or any sort of suggestions. They have their papaya rules, which according to Zach Brown is just racing each other fairly. Nothing that would imply they had conversations about how to manage that and bring home a 1-2. That in itself seems bizarre to me. If you say to two drivers, you're free to race, I mean, that's what they're going to do. I don't see how you can blame Piastri for that. He's been told you're free to race, go for the win. He's gone for the win. I'm not really sure if it matters if it's on lap one, lap 50. He has an opportunity to win and he's taken it. We got to remember though, for McLaren, they're fighting on two fronts. Lando has a real chance of winning the Drivers' Championship but they have a chance of winning the Constructors. Red Bull have been struggling, as we know, over the past five or six races, and now the gap is only 10 points between Red Bull and McLaren in the Constructors. And McLaren have two drivers scoring big points every week. Uh, Ferrari aren't even that far behind either, so McLaren are working on two fronts here. I will say, though, there was also an opportunity for team orders at the end of the race. Once it was clear that Piastri couldn't catch Charles Leclerc, and I think that was quite clear with maybe three or four laps to go. McLaren maybe should have come on the radio and said, Oscar, you can't win the race now. Obviously, we wouldn't take the win off you, but can we switch the cars for the World Championship? It might not seem like much, but Norris is currently 62 points behind Verstappen with eight races to go. Those three points could be incredibly important. Ultimately, this is my final conclusion. Do not blame Oscar Piastri. He's doing and he did what he's paid to do and what he was born to do. Drive that car and win. The fault is entirely on McLaren and will continue to be on them if they don't put any team orders in place. Oscar and Lando will continue to take points off each other and they can't afford to do that. Not while Red Bull are struggling. You put a race driver in a car and tell him, Go race. He's going to do what he does, and he's going to do just that. Put the blame where it actually lies. It's entirely on McLaren.